Hi guys. So my most recent update on my hashtag me too is, you know, again, it's the kids. Um, but fortunately we have had a, a little bit of a breakthrough. So I'm so grateful to God and the angels for this, um, this ability to be able to stand strong and empower my children. Um, so just to kind of give you a little bit of a understanding into what we're going through and, and why I'm doing this because the system has truly failed my children and, um, you know, all I can do is continue to pray and trust that God's going to work it out. So, um, as you guys know, you know, the kids have been going through it for over a year being forced to go with their um, father who is very controlling and manipulative and, and does very sick and twisted things. Um, and even after so long of them asking to not have to go on the weekends when they had to go and the attorneys, my terrible attorney that I had would say, you have, they have to go, you have to let, you know, have to make them go. And now, you know, with everything that happened, um, which is a whole other video I'll make about what happened with the whole divorce and all of that. Um, the paperwork that they're saying. Um, but um, this past week, um, you know, Mackenzie begged to not have to go to her dad's and he was not accepting of that. He, he didn't, he didn't want to not, he didn't want to allow her to make a decision on her own and advocate for herself. So she had a very traumatic weekend. It was phone calls, being upset and angry for no reason. And, um, it was, it was, it was just not good. It's almost, you know, it's like God reminding you, like, you know, even though you want to believe somebody is, you know, better or good, you know, the reality is, is that they really haven't been held accountable for anything that they've done and they haven't really changed. And that's, that's something that, you know, coming out of an, an abusive situation that you really should grasp onto and, and take, take by the, take by the reins, you know, that the truth is the truth and you know what the truth is. So you have to hold on to that no matter what anybody else tries to say to you or, or tries to convince you of, Oh, it's not that bad. Or he, he wasn't that bad. Or, you know, the, they're not really going through, you know, things that are that bad. Well, we know our truth. I know our truth. The kids know their truth. And so it doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up of why our system would continue to force people into these kinds of unhealthy situations. And so, um, this, this past week, um, after last weekend, when it was her day to go to her dad's during the week, um, she was upset and bent out of shape. And I just said, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with it. I told her, if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. I don't care what the order says. And she was like, really? And I said, yes, honey. If you don't want to go, I support you. You do not have to go. And she was so excited. And so, of course, you know, she's, you know, we set up a game plan about I was picking her up early from volleyball um, because she knew her dad might not let her not go. And so I went, I sent um, him a message that, this, that afternoon and saying, um, you know, Mackenzie is again asking to not have to come and you know, I really would hope that you would consider, you know, her, her request and what she's trying to advocate for herself. You know, the main thing is, you know, she's just, they don't, they're living in a space where it's seven people in a small place. The kids have been there for, oh, having to go there for over a year. He doesn't have beds for them. They sleep on recliners or floors or, or couches um, they don't have personal space and, you know, Mackenzie has celiac. So the wheat thing is hard. It's very stressful for her because there's wheat everywhere, which is, you know, that's something she's had to cope with and deal with. It's a way of life. But it's also more stressful for Mackenzie because she is the one that is ultimately, ultimately the target. She is the one who is enduring all the abuse now that it's just them two having to go with him. You know, it's been her, her counselors confirmed this. I mean, her, her 
please just continue to pray for her and for Trey. Back to the story, though, the breakthrough. So I get her out early and we're walking out of the school and it was so such another sign from God because there happened to be a police officer in the parking lot. And I was just like, thank you, God, for your angels and continuing to remind me that we're protected and I don't have to be scared. And um, as soon as we started going down the steps in the front of the school, Mackenzie raises her voice, not screaming, but she was like, he thinks he's still getting me. And I'm like, you know, look at her. And she's looking like past me through me. And, and her dad's car is pulling into the parking lot. And I'm just like, my heart stops. And before I even know it, she takes off running to the car. She's like at my car, like opening the door, open the door, open the door, open the door. You know, I'm trying to open the door. I press unlock. She dives in the back seat. I get in the car. She's laying down. She's like, please don't make me go with him. I'm not going with him. Please. Please don't make me go with him. And I'm getting emotional about this because it's like, why? Why, God? Why? Why did the courts do this? Why are they doing this? 50% of the time with the abuser. Why? But, you know, I have to keep it together. So... I'm just like praying in my head as she's, you know, back there like begging. And I'm just like, don't worry, honey. I'm like, I got this. You don't have to go with him. Don't worry, you know. Not afraid because I know that our angels are with us. And I know that there's a police officer there if we needed him too. But the sad part is, is if he pulled out the paper, the paper would say that she would have to go. And I know that. If you don't want to watch the video, don't watch the videos. Don't watch my videos, but I'm not going to be quiet. I'm not going to, I'm not going to not do this because this is really, really bleep, bleep, bleep messed up. Our system is messed up. And, um, it was kind of so funny that he actually didn't even see us. Like he pulled up to the front of the school. Like I was still in the, in my parking spot and he was like just sitting there waiting. And I'm just like, God, you're so amazing. It's so wonderful how awesome you are. And I just pulled out, you know, and Mackenzie's like, please mom, please hurry up. You know, and I'm just, honey, it's fine. I got you. Don't worry. We're good. Like I'm trying to be all tough, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, I, I am tough, but you know, our spirits sometimes are weak. Right. And so when you're, when you see your, your child hurting like that, it's hard to stay strong because you know, you just want to say to them, our system is bleep, bleep, bleep. But you know, the greatness is, is God is so good and he continues to work. And so that evening, you know, he was sending her messages like, you guys don't get to, you don't, you don't get to decide when, when I get to see her and blah, blah, blah. And you don't get to change the schedule. And I, and I said, I'm, I'm not changing the schedule. Mackenzie is changing the schedule because that's what she wants. And I am supporting her. She's going to send you some messages right now. So she sent him some messages. Please, dad, this is just what I need right now. This is easier and easier is what I need. We've been doing this for over a year. I just need you to understand. And he's, you're not, you know, you're not allowed to not answer my phone calls. You need to pick up the phone. And she just calmly, you know, repeated back. Well, first she was like, mom, what do I say? And I said, I don't want to tell you what to say, honey. I'm like, what are you feeling right now? What are the thoughts that come to your head when you're reading these messages from him? And she just started typing. And I'm just so, I'm so proud of her because if, if you could have read the messages, you would feel proud too. Because honestly, standing up to your abuser is, it's difficult. It's hard. It's scary. And that's where they're at. And Trey, just continue to pray for him because he, you know, he, he wants to go to his dad's and, and of course I, I let him go because that's what he wants. Again, like I said, I'm supporting the kids and what they want, what their needs are, because that's what you're supposed to do. And, um, you know, he, he, his thing, like he said to me yesterday was he doesn't want to hurt dad's feelings by not going. And because he misses them too. And I said, yeah, I understand that, you know? And he said, 
But if you tell him that I don't want to go, then I he 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 yells at me and I have to hear the lectures. And so I just don't want you to say anything about me, you know? So again, just pray for them, just pray for them. But I just wanted to share that, that good moment. You know, I know it's intertwined with the, the bad, the evil and the negative, but it is what it is. It's our truth. And I'm not going to stop telling it in a better space, in a better place, growing, evolving, getting stronger. We all three are. We love you guys. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.